I'm Alex Michelson. This week on The Issue is the Red Rocker himself, Sammy Hagar. In the 80s and 90s, Sammy Hagar led one of the biggest bands on the planet, Van Halen. At age 75, he's still selling out shows. Sammy Hagar, welcome to The Issue Is. Great to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Happy to be here, you know. It's happy to be upright, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Hagar grew up poor in the Inland Empire. Then and now, his favorite place, the beach. That to you represents freedom, right? It does. It, it represents, you can have that if you're, like you say, you can be dead broke on your butt <laughs> and you can still go to that beach and lay in that sand and get in that ocean. Hagar says music saved his life. It was total salvation. All the friends that I was hanging around with before music, um, they all got in trouble. At the height of his fame, his mom said, start a business. Here we are, sitting, take a little break. Cabo San Lucas. When his Cabo Wabo Cantina at first lost money, his bandmates wanted out. Broke Van Halen wow. up almost. Cheers, everybody. Welcome to the Cabo Wabo. There are now Cabo Wabos all over the world, and he made over $100 million from his tequila. He now donates all of his proceeds from his restaurants to local charities, including food banks in every city he's played in for 15 years. When you do it locally, you get to see the results. He invited us to check out his first ever beach club at the Waterfront Beach Resort in Huntington Beach. That is what makes that. you say, you know what, I'll have another one. <laughs> Which Keep is them buying. All Sammy's proceeds from this delicious menu going to Children's Hospital Orange County. That's the reason for everybody to come here. Sammy also talks about his new music. It's about Ah, oof. Look, at here come the goosebumps. Watch out. Here yeah. they come. Oops. Sorry, folks. And he tells me he was visited by aliens in the 60s. With this flying saucer with a little dome, these two little guys sitting in there. Uh, and it was like, wow, I, my mind expanded. Broadcasting across California, you're watching The Issue Is. Welcome to the Cabo Wabo Beach Club in Huntington Beach. I'm Alex Michelson. This week, the issue isn't politics but it's music, business, and philanthropy with a literal rock star. Oh, my dream, here it comes, I still have dreams. Sammy Hagar always dreamed of opening a beach club. We're on hand as he shows it off to the media. The whole thing about beach all day and party all night, this is, this is how you do it. It includes a spectacular beach view for this kid from Fontana. Growing up, I used to come down here. I'd come down here with my friends. What does the beach represent for you? When I was growing up poor, everyone knows that. If you don't know it, I was poor, yes. Yeah, and and, and almost, grew up in Southern California. Yeah, almost homeless. At times, we slept in cars with my mom, an alcoholic father. And I was raised by a single mom from the time I was five years old. We'd go to the beach. It's like, you know, our splurge was mom's going to put dollars worth of gas in the car, and we're going to go to the beach, and we could bring our friends. And it was it's the free thing that you can do. I just really promote the fact that you can be laying next to Oprah Winfrey and, you know, uh, Warren Buffett, right? Mm -hmm. And be broke on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to breathe the same air, get in that same water, get in the same sun, and it's laying on the same beach. And, and that's for free. Uh, yeah. And, and in California, think, there are no private beaches. Every beach is and public. There, and there should not be uh, yeah. private beaches. When did you find music? And, and, and how much of a salvation was that for you? Uh, it was total salvation because all my friends, well, I found music when I was 14. Yeah. And um, a friend of mine had a guitar. And he, he would play Dick Dale songs. And, uh, you know, Mr. Lou, boom. Ba -na 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 -na. He'd say, can you sing? I'd say, yeah, I can sing. And I knew every lyric to every hit <laughs> song. It was so weird, and I still do. I still don't use a teleprompter. I can sing 400 songs and that I haven't sang in 10 years, and I'll, and I'll remember the lyrics. It's, it's my, one of my gifts, yeah. and um, thank God I have it, because if I had to sit and stare at a teleprompter when I'm on stage, it would take away all my fun. <laughs> Is that what <laughs> you know? most rock stars do? Oh, Are they, yeah. They're reading a prompter they got with, them, them with the lyrics? They got them all the stages, and they really? got them, you know, on the, yeah. I mean, not everybody, but uh, I, a lot of them do. <laughs> People that I sit in with, you want a teleprompter? I say, hell no. <laughs> Hagar says playing music helped keep him out of jail. And we'd play it, and it got 
it really got me happy. I was really digging it. You know, oh, the girls were always more interested, you know, all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, at 14, 15, that's a cool thing. And it still is, actually. But <laughs> yeah. But I, so once I found music, though, I got so into it. It's all I wanted to do. And all the rest of my friends are going out and partying and getting in trouble, especially in yeah. Fontana, San Bernardino. You know, Inland Empire was a tough steel town, you know. I yeah. mean, there was uh, a lot of fighting going on, a lot of drugs and a lot of drinking, you know, at, at too young of an age. So all the friends that I was hanging around with before music, um, they all got in trouble. And I would have been right there in trouble with them. So it really saved me. And I'm, yes. I'm not exaggerating. It, yeah. it not, not one little bit, because I had nothing else to do. I was either going to hang around with those guys and go down there you know, smoking dope and doing drugs back when you go to jail for that stuff, right? You know? yeah. And um, instead, I was hanging out with my musical friends, and we were playing music, you know? I swear that now I'm gonna take your Hagar would find success in the band Montrose, a favorite of a young guitar player named Eddie Van Halen. When I met Eddie the first time, it was like, oh, oh man, you know, Montrose, oh, you know, like Rock yeah. Candy and all these songs. And I'm going, oh, wow, this guy, humble little kid, this guy can play, you know? Yeah. And the next thing I know, I'm in the band. Jump, jump. By 1985, David Lee Roth was out as Van Halen's lead singer, and Sammy Hagar was in. And then you become one of the biggest bands in the world, one of the biggest bands Maybe the. of all time, <laughs> yeah. right? At the height of that, how do you as a, as a human being even process that? All the, the sex, the drugs, the rock and roll, everything being thrown at you. How do you describe what that was like? Well, hey man, it's like the king, king for a day, every day, you know, anything. <laughs> Uh, those days in Van Halen, especially in the 80s, where you were just rich, famous, and, and you had uh, everything going, it was like you could, you could have anything you wanted. And thank God I'm kind of a conservative guy. The fact that I always cared more about my health and the music that yeah. I was able to get on stage and sing. So I didn't party all night. I'm a singer, you know. It's like right. you can't do that to your voice. Right. And you know the guys that did. You can hear them. Uh, I would make my tour manager or my bodyguard, whoever I was hanging out with, I'd, I'd make him, I'd say, now look, I don't care what I tell you, you take me to my room, and if I come to your room in the middle of the night and say, hey, you know, don't let, don't don't let, let me. Don't let me. And were you, and he had to convince he, you yeah. sometimes? No, yeah. I had a couple of good guys that really, really took care of me. What made you want to get into the business world at that point? Well, being poor, my mom <laughs> said, you're going to be like all the rest of those guys, and if you do something with your money, my mom just made me t think, you know, you're going to be broke. I'm telling you, you know, you're going to, hmm. you know, they all become drug addicts, alcoholics, and they die broke. While vacationing in Cabo San Lucas, a drunk man provided some unlikely inspiration. When I see this guy walking down the street Sunday morning, bumping into a barbed wire fence, ripped, he's bleeding, his shirt's ripped up, his pants ripped up, he got, you know, maybe no shoes. I mean, he was really drunk. So yeah. I've been up all night, bouncing off a barbed wire fence that was yeah. rusty, and bouncing back into the, f into the street, the dirt road. And I was going, ah, look at this guy, I, I, I can't get him Look, he's doing the Cabo Wabo. <laughs> and I started laughing to myself, and the person I was with started laughing. Sammy wrote the song Cabo Wabo, and then wanted to do more. And I started thinking, wow, I'm gonna build a, a bar called the Cabo Wabo. Mm. Just like that. And then I thought, oh, and maybe I can have my own tequila. See, the, the light was coming on. I was yeah. starting to see down the road. And I, oh, maybe I can have these all over the world. You know what I mean? So it, I just completely saw a deep vision, and no one else could see it. They said, are you crazy? There's no, you can't even get, you know, make a phone call down there. And yeah. I said, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And I bought the property, and I did it. Here we are, I said, take a little break. Call with San Lucas. At first, the whole band invested, but then wanted out. They got all freaked out when, when it lost money the first year. It was like, fellas, it's like we can afford $10,000 each yeah. year, you know? So they wanted out. Oh, we're not putting your money in that thing. Eh, it's your thing. I said, okay, okay. I, I, I took it over and uh, it just exploded. And the thing I didn't dream was having my a tequila that got huge. You know, I always call that the dream I never dreamt. You know, it was mm. part of my dream to have my own tequila at the, only at the bar there. Right. So I went down and got 
you know, tequila put in plastic jugs. I'm telling you, I actually, when I first got the tequila, it would come in gasoline cans. <laughs> the new ones, I mean, you know, they, they didn't smell like gas, but they would just fill up a, 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 a gasoline. A you know those bad, things, yeah. you run out of gas, you yeah. pour them in your, t in your yeah. car. Hagar sold the tequila 15 years ago for $100 million, and it's still a hit. I'm using Cabo Wabo tequila because this is the Cabo Wabo, and this was my first tequila. He showed us the process of making his favorite drink, a margarita. That, my friend, is just a standard margarita. He now sells a book of his favorite cocktail recipes. But here's the clincher. Blue Carousel. Ooh. Now, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. That's the ocean in Cabo. That's what it looks like. Warren Buffett asked Sammy to talk to his billionaire friends at one of his conferences. He was really impressed and blown uh, away, and he, he said that you have such a, a great business man. insight that so few people have. Wow, you want me to talk to a thousand CEOs? He goes, everybody in this room runs a billion dollar company, and I'm going, oh great, and I'm going to tell them how to do it, and, I, and he told me backstage in a room, he's sitting there with a hole in his shoe, <laughs> and socks that didn't match, right? right. And, I, and uh, he said, you think different than these guys. He goes, I read your book, and I saw what you did with Cabo Wobble, and he goes, I, I want you to teach them how to get outside the box. I'm here throwing parties to promote my new uh, Beach Bar cocktails, which are wonderful. You know, but I, the only thing I can honestly say is, on a business sense, you go with your gut, you know? Yeah. The second someone lays something on me, I'm like, hey, I have this idea, what do you think? Or, and my, my gut either goes, yes, or my gut goes, hmm and I gotta listen to it, you know, that's all I do. If I feel it, and I say, oh yeah, and I get excited, I can see the big, if you can't see all the way to the end of the tunnel, don't go in that tunnel. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you say, oh, I got this great idea, but wow, how's it working, what's back there? Uh, I, I, I'm just one of those guys, if, I, if the light comes on and I can see all the way to the end, I go, let's do it. And people go, you're nuts, what do you think you're doing? And like, I, I lost so many friends and business manager and, and an accountant quit and all these things when I started Cabo Wabo. Yeah, really, and, they, yeah, they, I mean, they broke, wanted... Yeah, broke, broke Van Halen up almost. Cheers everybody, welcome to the Cabo Wabo. Sammy has so much money now, he's decided to donate all future proceeds to local charities. Why do that and, and what does that mean for you when you see the results of that? Well, that's, the results is the thing that gets the hook in the mouth. Because when you do it locally, you get to see the results and you yeah. get to meet some of the kids and the parents. And you can go down to the local food bank that you just donated money to and you can hand out food. The funds from here in Huntington Beach going to parents at Children's Hospital Orange County and Tilly's Life Center, which helps teens cope with crises. They give them some love and they give them some hope and they give them some education and they give them things to do. Yeah. And it's really cool. Have there been a moment though where you've interacted with a kid and you see yourself as a kid and now know that because of what you've done, you've been able to help a kid like you? Well, I'm so old, I don't remember being a kid. <laughs> so, yeah. But I can sure relate to someone helping because I remember when I was a kid, uh, whenever it was Thanksgiving, Christmas or uh, Easter or any uh, celebrated holidays where families get together, my mom would always have to go to a food bank and get a free turkey or go to the, uh, they were handing out hams or, yeah. or something, you know, and, and we always uh, utilize that, you know, yeah. and it was a big deal. We said, all right, man, we got a turkey, man, we're going yeah. home and invite the neighbors. And uh, so it was always a great celebration. So I, I know what it feels like uh, to have that. Every city I played for over, for 15 years, every city I've played, every concert, I mean, I do sometimes 100 shows a year, I donate money to the local food bank in that town. That is awesome. For 15 years. That's, uh, I recommend more artists do that. There, yeah. There's something, I'll look at the camera and say, yeah. you guys need to do that. Oh my God, there are those <laughs> eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Ah, oh, just that's my favorite record ever. It's your favorite record yeah, you've ever done? Yeah, that's why it's sitting there, yes. At my age, I didn't think I was ever going to make a record again because hmm. I made one of about five years ago before COVID. And, you know, it did great, but it, it was like, it, went, it actually went number one. But it's like number one is 77,000 records, not yeah. 7 million records like the old days. Yeah. So I thought, man, I got to work so hard and spend all that money and all that time and effort. And then there's no reason to do it. I go out and I play. Uh, concerts and they want to hear I Can't Drive 55, they want to hear you know, Van Halen on top of the world, Why Can't right. This Be Love, and I throw a new one in in between and it's kind of like the moment where people go to the bathroom. Right. <laughs> so I thought, what am I doing? So I didn't yeah. think I'd ever make a record again. And yeah. then I just got inspired and you know, inspiration is a funny thing. Lockdown challenge four. Let's see what the boys got planned for me today. His inspiration, the pandemic. After COVID, I was so held back. I, it's like I was just going, you know, I, I was like a rubber band, you know, I was like, yeah, yeah. like a bow and arrow, man. Yeah. Man, when COVID opened up, oh, phew, man, my creativity just went flying. Really? Just I was writing just, songs yeah. like meaningful songs. Do you have a favorite song on there? Uh, yeah, it's actually um, Childhood's End. And what's that about? The last song. It's about, <laughs> oof, look, at here come the goosebumps. Watch out, here yeah. they come, whoops. Sorry, folks, I'm, I'm a sensitive guy. The wind blows and a lot happens with it. my body. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, it's about the end of COVID being, it's for us humans on this planet. We, the whole planet went through the same thing together. That's a big deal. We've never, I mean, there's been, you know, the Black Plague in the old days and all these things, you know, but the whole world didn't go through it at the same time and go through the same thing. We did that together on this thing. So coming out of it, it's almost like now we're all grown up. No, now everybody woke the F up, you know, and it's childhood's end. It's like, no, no, you, we're not kids anymore. Father Time's over there, looking over my shoulder. Father Time essentially tells his life story. Father Time, you know, that's my, my ultimate song I've ever written, my best performance I've ever done in my life, it's all on that record. But there's, I think it's what we have to come out of that with is that, okay, we all went through this together and guess what? Like wake up, start caring, caring about other people, right. care about yourself. I think we have to take care of the planet and take care of each other and just really be careful. Just get your head out of the hole and, and really start looking around and look up in the sky and realize it's like, it's a delicate system, man. And, and I think we just gotta be more conscientious. Up next, Sammy says he was visited by aliens in the 60s. It was like, wow, I, my mind expanded. Long before Sammy Hagar became one of the biggest stars in the rock world, he says he was visited by aliens. Well, I was sleeping so? and it was in the 60s, so there was no wireless things and I was wirelessly contacted and I felt like, a comp and like I was being, like describing now, I was being downloaded. Either something was yeah. uploading or downloading. Yeah. You know, I don't think they were downloading information. I, mean, I think they were uploading to see what I knew and who, you know, just, yeah. so I feel like it, I was like an experiment, you know, like a, yeah. a lab rat, <laughs> you know wow. what I mean? And, and uh, but it, when I w woke from it and I caught it happening, I could actually see the guys because we were connected. They were 13 miles away in L Lyle Creek sitting on this exact spot. And they were exactly these things that these guys are talking about now. The, this flying yeah. saucer with a little dome, these two little guys sitting in there. Uh, and it was like, wow, I, my mind expanded. That's all it did. It just made me think, wow, there's something else out there. There's something going on. I never even told people about it for 20 years, wow. you know, because it was, it was so weird. And, and um, everybody that's had those experiences, now you meet them and they say, yeah, I know, man. It's like, and, and it's, you realize there's something going on and it's really coming out right now, though, a lot of it. And I'm really, I'm really interested in it because I had the experience. I want to know where these guys come from and what I'm supposed to be doing here. Yeah. You know, help me out, brothers. Wow. You know what I mean? Don't just come messing with me, you know, <laughs> tell me, to help me, show me how to make life better for the world, for other people. To watch our full unedited conversation, head to youtube.com slash Alex Michelson or search for The Issue Is wherever you stream your podcasts. Up next, Sammy Hagar's vision for the future.
This was the best crudo I've ever had anywhere. I mean, Sammy Hagar is showing off the food at his restaurant at the Waterfront Beach Resort in Huntington Beach. Among the options here, the burger, crispy portilla bruschetta, eggs benedict with jalapeno, deep fried ice cream, and the chicken taquitos, which I had to try. How good is it? I have no that? shame about eating on camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Hagar owns the beach cafe here, but doesn't own the hotel itself. But one day, he wants to open a Cabo Wabo hotel and resort. You have a new vision, potentially doing something like this as a hotel somewhere, right? Yeah. As a, as a, a, a Cabo land. Wabo yeah. hotel. My Disneyland, my Disney World. It's and called. you're going to make it happen. I will make it happen, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned one thing, and that's it. You just, you just got to keep your nose to the grindstone and just go, keep going forward, and, and you, you will get things done. If Hagar's life story tells you anything, don't doubt his ability to make his dreams come true. What do you think is the most important thing that all the rest of us can learn from your story? that you can do anything you can put your mind to. Do not think that you can't do something because I don't have, I don't even have a high school education. I'm not proud of that, but I got thrown out of school my high school, my senior year, and I just didn't go back. Mm -hmm. And so, and you just have to have passion, a good idea, have passion, and it, it usually has to have a higher meaning. You have to want it for all the right reasons. You know, um, being wanting to be rich and famous, everybody wants to be richer and more famous than they are, you know. But that isn't the real goal. The real goal is like, because you want to accomplish something and you just set your mind to it and I swear you can do it. Anyone yeah. can do it. You don't have, I'm, I'm no special guy whatsoever. I just have good ideas, a ton of passion, and I'm willing to work my butt off. Okay? Yeah. That's all it takes. I can feel the inspiration here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. For the time. This was My so pleasure. fun. Thank you for the Thank you for watching the issue Thanks. as that was that was incredible. Nicely Woo. done. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was awesome. You have a favorite lyric or anything or anything to, to leave us with? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Face down in Cabo. Kiss in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Bravo.